Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Vandy. As well, back in another as on the car fight Vanguard as on the Vandy good video. So you guys enjoyed, to like, comment, subscribe, and let's come on start, shall we? So we got a bunch more cards for the V collections. I'm pretty sure either this week or next week we're gonna be at the end of them. But we got some pretty nice cards. Some of them I'm really hyped for. Some of them I really like a lot more than others. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? First up, we have Liberator. Holy Shine Dragon. Mm. I have opinions about this one. Grade 3, 200 drive, Excel, gift, 12k base, auto, when, it's, when riding over a unit with Liberator and its card name, doesn't mean when this unit rode upon, which means when it rides over something else, so like a grade 2 or another grade 3. Counter Blast 1, search after one grade 3 Liberator with a different card name from this unit, because otherwise you can just keep using the skill unless they made a name once per turn. Ride it as stand and shuffle your deck, and then if you have four more cards in your damage zone, look at the top five, call two cards from them to re shuffle your deck. Okay, so that's pretty good. So automatically when you're at grade three, you get two Excel gifts. We all know getting a gift advantage while the opponent's at grade two is a huge thing, especially if you're getting more than just one gift a turn, and you can combine that with Percival. So effectively, ride this, get an Excel gift, maybe it's an Excel two, draw, use this thing skill, counter boss one, get a Percival. If you're at four damage, you get two more rear guards, use Percival skill, counter boss one, get another Excel gift, and then you just got three Excel gifts, one, two from normal riding, and then one from Percival skill. So all around, that's really good because it's only a cost of a counter boss, and then auto soul at the end of your turn if your damage zone has four or more cards in it, you may bounce it to hand. So really nice, uh, can get you a board, especially in the case of you're losing, and definitely works for me in the case that I don't run heal guardians, and people will abuse you apparently if you don't run heal guardians. Um, get you gifts a lot quicker, and not to mention that he can bounce himself to hand and keep doing the loop next turn. So all right, I think this thing's an amazing grade three. My issue. We do not have liberators that I like running. What I mean by this, all of you should know by now, or at least a good chunk, if you've been with my channel from the get-go, you probably know that I'm a huge fan of liberators, like liberators and Ezels, obviously Ezels are my main, but like uh, liberators are my top second because they were, they were the first gold deck I did play. But I hate bluish flames with a burning passion. I don't know why, maybe just because I hated a lot of things that came out of Legion era, and granted I like a lot of the Legion V cards now, but I hated them back in Legion, and bluish flames I associate with all of Galard, and I hated all of Galard with a burning passion for whatever reason, and I hate bluish flame liberators because of that, and the only grade threes that are liberators that we have that isn't holy shine are bluish flame cards. So. You can see my predicament where I really hope we get Garmore Liberator, because if we don't, then I can't use this card that I really like using. So, four of Liberator, Holy Shine Dragon, and any Liberator deck just because it can lead to um, good gifts and quick advantage. Then we have Enigma Storm, which Bushy straight up admitted that it might... Well, they didn't admit that it was a mistake, but it could have been a mistake. Grade 3, 200 drive, force gift, 13k base. Continues Vanguard. During your turn, this unit gets plus 5 for each Enigma in your soul. Bushy's own words. Yes, this is still the only Enigma in V. The first Enigma in its first kill involves you having multiple Enigmas in soul. Thankfully, it doesn't say different. If it's that different, I would straight up say Bushy made a mistake. Or, like, Bushy had, like, the shittiest timing for this card. Anyways, Auto Van wants to protect the start of your attack step. If this unit's power has 20k or more until end of turn, it gets a crit. If it has 35k or more, it gets a drive. And if it's 50k or more, it gets the following ability, which is Auto Van wants to protect the end of the battle they attacked. Discard two, stand them until end of turn, this unit's drive becomes zero. So really nice that um he uh, basically is a copying of Commander Laurel's skill originally. Kind of not, but kind of is. Or if you don't remember, Enigma and Storm with Commander Laurel was pretty much the main thing for Dimension Police back in the day, or at least it wasn't Zero, because I got abused by that so much in Zero. But his skill is really good, because he's an instant plus one crit if you just do any form of power stacking. If you shuffle force one on him, he has an immediate extra crit. And then if he has 35k or more, he gets an extra drive, and then you know the 50k or more, which is the possibility or possibility of not, he could get a restand. So all run that's pretty good in him. But my reasoning for this is, um, that I think he's weird is that he is the only Enigma card and this was our last Dimension Place reveal for this set. However, my theory is this. Next set, we're not going to get a Grade 3 for Dimension Police. Instead, we're going to end up getting the Grade 2 Enigma Wave or one of the Enigma Grade 2s, a Grade 1 Enigma, and then we're going to get the starter for Enigmans that does something like special in Soul if you have Enigma Storm as your Vanguard. So, that's my hope why Bushy chose to reveal this now, so that yes, on its own currently, it is not super strong, but this leaves room for one more card next set that Bushy can use to support them with one more card. And that's what I really hope they're doing. I really hope they are, and they better give us Enigmans next set, because if they don't, Bushy's made a fucking stupid ass mistake, I'm calling them out on this. They better do it. <laughs> Like, I'm not even a fan of Enigmas, but they better do it, because you don't just give us this card and then not give us more support for it. So, for Enigma Storm, he's not as good in his own right now, 
But I'm really hoping Bushy like follows through and gives us three cards that are really good enigmas. Otherwise, th we are gonna have a talk about certain card designs for an enigma storm. Then we move on to Steam Maidens, which either broke my curse with Steam Maidens or just made them astronomically better. First up, we have Traveling with the Steam Gear Cat, Grade 1 Boost Tank, Ashio at AK Base. On was placed on Vanner Rear, look at top 3, build to one Steam Maiden from among them, put it to hand, and put the raining cards to the bottom. I love this card. It can You can get the Heal Trigger, you can get the Grade 2, you can get the Grade 1, you can get the Grade 3. Unfortunately, you can't get the Grade 4 because the Grade 4 doesn't have Steam Maiden's card name, but that's really good. It is a free shirt search. Of the top three, you don't have to discard, you don't have to pay a counter blast, you don't have to pay a soul blast, just by being placed on banner rear by any means, you get a top three search, if there's a steam maiden, cool, add it to hand and the rest will go to bottom. There is no minus to this, except you're sending triggers to bottom, but that's expected minus. And then auto rear, when this unit boosts, uh, it gets plus 1k until, um, for, until end of battle for each card in your bind zone. So that's really good just general um, gear chronicle, because you can just do so much binding, like my friend has a deck called... Um, beyond d beyond dimension or dimension beyond i think it's called beyond dimension but it's like basically mystery flare combined with beyond order which we built out of a whim and it's really good and you get so many cards in bind zone and gear cat could abuse that so much and it's, it can be face down bind zone it can be face up bind zone all around gear cat's an amazing grade one and i like it and it's an amazing card for steam maiden so you run out of four of it if you don't you're crazy then we have Steam Maiden Eternia. Grade 2 Intercept 5k shield, 10k base auto, when it's placed on van or rear, carrying boss 1, drift after 1, traveling with the Steam Gear Cat, called rear guns and combats, and shuffle your deck. All around, that's already really good, because it's just a call this. Pay 1 counter blast, you get a free searcher. That's amazing. And then auto rear, at the end of the battle, that she attacked while well, boosted by anything. Soul blast 1, reveal the top 2, choose the 1 from your hand, choose the 1 from among them, add it to hand, and bind the remaining. So that's pretty good. You can choose not to get any. And then set up your bind zone for skills like Elu, who can, well, yes, she can't bind herself. Elu can bound the grade 2 to get the grade 3. All around, like, and her is really nice. She leads to search combos. She can possibly fix you out of juice, especially if you run my deck where you only run four grade threes and then you see one of them from Elu, I mean, from Eternia's skill. Not to mention, she gets a support card and literally gets you a column and then you can intercept with her next turn and just have like the perfect board setup. So, all around, Eternia is like an amazing grade two. And there's very little Soul Blast in the deck, so um, four of. Yeah, we only got one real Steam Maiden for Gear Chronicles this set, but I don't fucking care. We got a really good support card. We got a really good Steam Maiden in and of itself. And then we have a really good defensive card, which we I don't think I saw coming anyways. Retroactive Time Maiden Uludu. First of all, I want to say I love her art. If you see my deck profile yesterday, then you know how much I love this art. But grade three, I mean grade four, Twin Drive, 15k base. Okay. So if by some, it has no Vanguard skills or Rearguard skills, by the way, so there's no reason to call it to Rearguard besides multi-attack, and there's no reason to ride it on Van, because if you do, then you're crazy, because, yeah, 15k would make the difference in D, which it did, as proven by tournaments, but it's not going to make the difference in V. It's not, especially if your opponent is playing a Force deck and they just shove Force 1, but, like... You know, the, the 15k is funny, but its skill is auto when it's put on guard circle. Choose a unit card from your drop zone, whether it's a trigger unit or not, and either bind it or put it to bottom of deck. And she'll get plus 25k shield for the battle. So already this is a better version of the original Retroactive Time Maiden Allure, who has sent two triggers to bottom, or sorry, not two triggers, send one trigger and one normal unit to bottom, and she'll get plus five. Granted, you get one less card, but you can still send anything, and you can put it to bind zone to set up for your uh, Steam Maiden skills on your turn, and she'll get plus 25k shield, which yes, only brings her to 25k shield, but that's still 5k more than the original Allure. So that's pretty good. And then auto drops, and when your Vanguard is attacked, discard a heal trigger from your hand, call it to guard circle. Do you see that? I see opportunity because you can use this to guard, gets in drop, or like get into drop somehow. Then when your opponent attacks you, discard the heal trigger, place this on guard circle, and either use this to get a free bind of your heal so you can call it next turn with Elu skill, or you can send the heal to bottom and then, you know, try to not deck out, but also get a free heal back to deck. Already that's an amazing skill. And then auto when it's retired from guard circle, it's a mandatory bind. So it doesn't matter where it comes from, it can come from drop, it can come from hand. The second it goes to the second it's retired from guard circle, it gets bound. But that's good because she can be called by Elu skill. So you have a fourth attack in one column. You attack with a Lure on a fourth circle. You attack with the grade one on the fourth circle. You attack with a grade two on the fourth circle. You attack with an Elu on the fourth circle. You bounce her and then you attack with Elu. Actually, no, you wouldn't be able to do that because to bounce to do it with Elu, you would have to um bounce it with elu skill so unless they give us another way to like um 
do skills like that at most you only ever get three attack no still four attacks on the same col um same column but if they ever gave us another way to um attack with the same column again we would have five attacks thanks to this all around this thing's amazing amazing defensive card i love its art it adds future possibilities of what bushiro can do for steam maidens all around i think it's good for of then we have Skydiver. Grade 3, 200 force gift, 13k base. Auto is placed on van or rear. Choose to two normies from your drop zone. Put them in the bottom of the deck in any order. For each card put by this effect, he gets plus 5k for the turn. So, easy plus 10. You send two normies back here, preventing yourself from decking out. Okay, that's cool. And at the auto rear, at the start of your main phase, put the soul search for one Skydiver call to rear guard and stuff for your deck. I said before when Reckless Express was revealed that all good uh, Spike Brother cards in V have that skill that just sell themselves to souls to call another copy. I said that as a joke. I said that as a joke. And frankly, if you just showed me this card, I would still say it's a joke. But then this was revealed. Juggernaut Maximum Maximum. You see, they were re they released Allure on purpose. They made us think, oh, they're bringing back G Guards and V, but they have really defensive skills that are probably better than their original defensive skills. So, okay, that makes sense. So when you think of Juggernaut Maximum Maximum, a standard G Guard, you would think, oh, yeah, it's definitely not going to be a, a main Vanguard. Nope, 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 but she took a 180. But she took a 180 on that, uh, gonna be a really good G-guard or, like, a defensive card. Nope. Spike Bros don't need a fucking defensive card, they need an aggressive card. Because as the statement goes, a good defense is non-existent and you only use offense and then you break through literally every defensive barrier that exists. So, Juggernaut Maximum Maximum, Grade 3, Twin Drive, Force Gift, 13k base, Auto Van at the start of your main phase, if, sorry, at the start of the main phase, not yours, both players' main phases, if your opponent's Vanguard is a Grade 3 or greater, until end of turn, this unit gets continuous Van, during this turn, all units place gets plus 5k power and 5k shield, that includes himself. So... Your guardians have plus 5k shield, so everything has at least 5k shield. This unit has um, 5k shield. And during your turn, everyone on your board that's getting placed gets plus 5 power. So you ride this. If you go second, you ride this. You got numbers. You got numbers, and this all happens for free. And then auto van, once per turn, at the start of the battle, they attack. If you place four more rear guards during this turn, that is not that hard. That is not. Nah, I have like power back Ronaldo literally get you four on his own. And then you can just do the skydiver into a reckless express into a, a high speed full. I mean, a high speed bracky. I mean, you could high speed bracky, but also a agile fullback. And then you want, you need one more rear guard. Uh, but, anyways, if you called four more rear guards, soul blast three, choose one of your columns, stand all units in that column. And if this unit was stood by the effect until end of turn, this unit loses a drive. And at the end of that turn, put all your rear guards on the bottom of the deck in any order. So, the thing I don't understand about his skill is. If you don't stand his column, does everything still go back anyways? Or do they not go back unless you stand his column? Because, I mean, I always stand his column regardless, but like, because you want the extra Vanguard attack, but still. Either way, that's amazing that he can get multi-attack. He can make just a big-ass column swing again. I mean, hell, I remember when me and my friend first played with a deck that we doubly named Football Def Team for a very good reason. He swung at me with 116. I died immediately. But if he could do that again... I would die also immediately, but still. So, you know, that's a pretty good skill. Soul Blast 3 is not that hard, especially when, like, every good Spike Brother card you're going to run can send themselves to Soul and stand himself, stand Agile fullback in the back row, shove a Force 1 on Van. You got extra drives. Downside is, you, you know, he loses the drive before he actually does his first drive check, so you're only getting two drives in total. But that's still pretty good that you can do a total of six attacks with an aggressive deck. So that's amazing. You put them to four damage before you ride to grade three. This is an almost an instant death. I should know. I've played this so many times. So again, the only thing I don't know is that do you put your rear guards to bottom regardless if you stand as calm or not, or is it just only if you stand as calm that things go to bottom? Either way, he's an amazing card, super powerful, really good four of. Then we have our Seven Seas card, which I'm so hyped for. Literally last night, because I'm recording this on Monday, I was like, I really hope we get a Grand Blue reveal soon, because I really want to do a Protect versus a Protect game on Friday, and I know we're getting Angel Feather, so I really wanted another Protect deck, and I was like, I really want to play Grand Blue. We got Grand Blue, and we got my favorite deck, Seven Seas. So Seven Seas Sword King Knight Haze, grade 2 NSF 5k shield, 9k base. Really like the swords, as we all know, I'm a sword boy. Auto when it's placed on van or rear. Counter boss one. Look at top five. Two to one seven seas from Mundlum. Reveal it, add it to hand and discard the remaining. That's so good. There are only two cards in seven seas that use counter blast now, and he's one of them. Which means you can just use them with the uh, night spinel. Use night spinel. Get this from drop. Use this card. Get another seven seas. Instant board. That's three cards that gets a board. So that's really nice. From one card, by the way. And then it works on van or rear, so that's also amazing. And then auto van or rear, the standard uh, on hit ability, choose one of your vanguard or rear guards without treasure markers, you get a treasure marker. So that's really good. You know, uh, if it hits, cool, you get a treasure marker. If it doesn't hit, 
It's just on hip pressure, and not to mention he can get you another seven Cs, and it goes to hand, doesn't go to drop. So if they ever made us like a really good defensive seven Cs card, this thing immediately becomes an option because uh, you don't have to lose it. And not to mention that he can fix your uh, G assist, which I do sometimes need because for some reason Nightmist never wants to show up in my hand. So four of Night Haze because he's just really good. Then we have Seven Seas Aspiration, Okuchi Voyage. The funny thing is I didn't have this thing's name last night because the person who was sending it through me through Discord didn't give me its name. So I Google or like I Google translate its name and I was like, this name can't be right because I got all of its name. But I was like, this name is so weird. That can't be right. Five seconds later, I get his name and I was like, wow, the one time Google Translate was fucking right. <laughs> Anyways, grade 3, 200 protective 12k base. We all know I'm biased with this card. 1, it's the 7 Cs. 2, the moon. 3, it's like a giant, like, phantom, no, ghost, like, Japanese, Chinese dragon. I think that's Chinese with, like, the real weird ring things. I don't know. Maybe that's just me speculating. But either way, it looks cool. Contains van or rear during your turn. For each card in your drop zone or bind zone with 7 Cs, its card name gets plus 3. So really nice that they're implying something. Drop zone, that makes sense. This is grand blue. Bind zone? I'm sorry, is Bushy trying to make us use Negrobolt with this? Or are they hinting at Glendios' skill to bind stuff? Or is it just meant to be a counter to Gauntlet or stuff like that? Either way, I'm just making a point that uh, really nice that he can buff off of from 7 Cs and drop zone and bind zone. And if you can notice, all of his skills are Vanguard, Rear Guard, so he works as like the best support grade 3. Because if you need to ride him, that's great because you can still use his skill. You can't, you don't want to ride him because Night Misses is the inherently better to grade 3 to have on Van. That's good because you know you can use Voyage on Rear. So all around, like, this thing's an amazing grade 3 to hands down with. But, you know, good that he can get numbers on his own. Active Vanguard or Rear Guard once per turn, remove a treasure marker. Okay. I say that's hard work and annoying because, like, my friend literally cockbox me every time I play Treasure, I mean Seven Seas, and if you don't believe me, ask my friend. He will literally tell you every time I swing, he will guard everything regardless if he needs Chiral Blast or not because he hates me. The one time he didn't know what Seven Seas did, and ever since then I've scarred him for life with that ability, so, uh, yeah, he never lets me hit anymore unless he has no choice. Anyways, you have to two grade two or less units with Seven Seas and the card name from Drop and call him to Rear. So it's really good. You can call him Night Spindle, get another Rear Guard, you can call him Night Haze and get another card. All around, that's amazing. It's only downside is you have to remove a treasure marker, but A, you're probably going to swing into something. So that's normally the one you get rid of on Van. And it's just a call to rear guards. And it doesn't cost counter blast, it doesn't cost soul blast. And then auto Van or rear the standard on hit ability to get a treasure marker. So, all around, 7C's got like fucking buffs here, man. We got two cards. We just for some reason got King Serpent, but we got two cards. The fucking grade 3 is amazing. It, it just found amazing it's like the best support grade three i love support grade threes that have like vanguard and rear guard skills and that can work perfectly on both this is one of them it works perfectly on both because all of its skill are vanguard or rear guard night haze is an amazing searcher all around i think these are good four of and next up we have strongest beast dd ethics buster extreme uh this is weird for me because i literally titled the first part of this video all of these cards are amazing and now it seems very weird that i'm titling it again when i don't feel the same about this card but you know whatever we'll see where we get with it so grade 3 twin traffic so give 12 gate base i will say i love its art i think it's cool auto van when your unit with beastie and its card name stands by any ability whether it's its own or this unit's ability if you have beastie ethics buster in your soul this unit gets plus five for the turn so that's really nice it's when your unit with beastie and its card name stands so it can stand itself and it will still get the plus five so that's really nice you can do the ride from ethics buster do vanguard attack if the attack doesn't hit stand it and then um gets plus five so that's really nice it can boost up numbers it is not on once per turn so if you manage to do a board restand while the opponent is going for a one to pass maybe that's just a fuck ton of numbers that they're not blocking so that's cool and then auto van once per turn when your card with beating its card name appears in your drive check okay counter blast one discard one okay not too hefty of a cost stand one of your rear guards with the same grade as the revealed card Okay, and then if you have four more cards to your damage zone, you stand all units with the same grade by the card. So, if you see a grade two in your drive check and you're at four damage, you stand all grade twos. Same with grade threes and grade ones and grade zeros. It, well, actually, no, not grade zeros because there's not a beast duty grade zero that isn't white tiger, and I highly doubt you'd run any of them in the main deck. But, why though? That's not particularly powerful. Like, it doesn't get a board restand. Because there's never going to be a situation where you have all grade twos on board and then you sack a grade two. Okay, sure, but that's only going to get you at max five attacks. No, four extra attacks, which all can be shut down by triggers unless you proceed to see a front. Like, yeah, extreme will get plus 20. That's great. But, like, 
I don't know about the other guys. And then if you see a grade three, which is the ideal situation because you want to stand this because he's not losing drives because it says stand units. Well, that's not particularly good either because you have to check a grade three. And what's the chances all your rear guards in the front row are going to be grade threes? Like, because you're going to have to make space for Ethics Buster for this to be valuable, which has no rear guard skills. You're going to have to make room for this thing, obviously, and it has no rear guard skills. The reverse, in my opinion, is better, so you're going to run the reverse. But then what does that leave you with rear guard grade threes? Nothing. You get absolutely nothing. Maybe the Ethics Buster original has a rear guard skill, but point is, like, you get nothing from it. And, yeah, you can run Aluminum Dragon, but still, that's not that many Beast DD cards that have um, BC in their card names that are useful and rear guards that are grade threes. Like, there's no real plus to extreme if you check a grade three, and that's the worst part. It's a Hell Mary move, but with, like, the most lackluster of a Hell Mary move. You see, Armor Break is a Hell Mary move. War DD is sure cards are calling a fucking heel to an Excel circle and then calling two fronts to the back row. That's a Hell Mary move. Calling a front row of grade twos and then drive checking grade three just to get a Vanguard restand after the grade twos probably already swung. That's not a Hell Mary move. That's just called you getting fucking unlucky. Like... I don't know, is there something I'm not seeing here? Is it, like, some broken BS that is really good? Or, like, did the person I get this from make a mistranslation on the fandom? It says, stand every unit possible, etc. Like, I don't know. He he has a good ability. He makes them hard to guard if you stand aboard. But at the same time, you cannot consistently get, like, a really good board restand without possibly getting either fucked over by a trigger or just, like just get a consistent board restand in general is my thing so i don't know i think he's okay for what he is i say he's a three of but i think the reverse is just better and now to our last reviews which contain our jewel knight friends of course ashley burrows so first up we have our grade one security jewel knight al wayne grade one boost tank a shield a k base act rear guard rest this unit and put a normal unit from your drops on the bottom so charge one two three vanguards with jewel knights card name gets plus five for the turn okay i think it was pretty good jewel knights can definitely get multi-attack I, don't, I think they can afford to lose out on a booster, especially when that booster gets you a free soul charge out of it, and it sends something to bottom, so you can call more stuff with skills later, and not to mention it's just giving you the uh, main cost for Jewel Knights, which is soul for free, so that's pretty good. And then Auto Van or Rear, when your thing is placed on top of it, look at top two, choose up to one card of Jewel Knight from among them, reveal it, put it to your hand, and put the rest on the bottom in any order. I feel like that's what Sybil did, right? Or was Sybil something else? Was simple when something's placed on top of it get plus 10? Because I swear that's just simple skill. But either way, it's pretty good. You know, it's a, basically a free soul charge. Your vanguard will get plus 5. It can um, dex attack for you and get a jewel knight to hand. And not to mention, I just like her art. And it, no, it's not because of this. It's because of the bow. We all know I'm biased towards bows. So four copies of Alwyn. I don't know. There's just something I like about it. So it's a good card so far of. Then we have Banding Jewel Knight Miranda, grade 2 and SF 5k shield and 10k base. Auto rear, when this unit attacks when not boosted, if your vanguard's a Jewel Knight Chiron Blast 1, choose one of your vanguards and until end of battle, increase or decrease this unit's power to match that unit's power. So you get to save on boosters for your attacks, so when you do multi-attack with like Ashley or Salome, um, you can manage to maintain a booster so you can go more aggressive on the second hit, and not to mention Miranda, depending on how big the vanguard's power is, might be able to be just as aggressive on this hit. So Ron Rand is pretty good setting up uh, for future calls and it's only counter blast, which is very rare to come by in Jewel Knights. And then auto van rear when your other units plus on top of it, soul charge one and if you have no face of damage on counter charge one. So it's really nice. It is a mandatory soul charge, but pluses to that that is a free soul with no cost to it. And then if you had no face of damage to begin with, because maybe you were too busy uh, using her skill too many times, you had to counter charge. So all around I think it's good. Like, even if you don't run it to use the first skill, you should definitely run it to use the second skill, just in case you get over counterblasted. So not something I'd say I'd run out of four, but definitely something I'd say I'd run out of three of. It's just a good card, because it's set up, so three of. And then finally, we have Broken Heart and Jewel Knight, Ashley Reverse. By the way, I've not read any of these three Jewel Knights, like, this is my first time reading them, so let's see what Ashley does. Grade 3, Twin Drive, Force Gift, 13k base. Can't say I'm a huge fan of the art. Feels plain, but I like the plainness of it, weirdly enough. Anyways, uh, act vanguard, soul blast 2, lock one of your rear guards, choose one of your opponent's front row units, kill it, look at the top four cards, choose to one jewel knight from among them, call it to rear guard, and put the rest on bottom. And that's not once per turn. So if you're willing to lock two units, and you're willing to soul blast four, you can nuke their front row, and then get a front row of your own. 
Okay, I think that's actually pretty good. You know, you're getting plus. I don't remember what the old Ashley did, but I don't think it did something like this. I mean, I know the old Ashley like could murder rear guards, yes, when you lock, but I don't even remember if it could call. But that's pretty good in my opinion, just getting the call and then killing their front row. And then auto van when it attacks, if you have two or more locked cards, Kairabas wants to draft or two grade two lower cards with Juana and their card names. Call them to regard circle, shuffle your deck, and for each of your locked cards, this unit gets plus ten. And if you have three or more locked cards until end of battle, your opponent cannot call sentinels from hand. So if you're ballsy enough to use Soul Blast six and you're not playing Clean Joker, but you're ballsy enough to Soul Blast six and you just get a call just deck thin and nuke their board basically. Uh, well, not nuke their board, but just only nuke two units. You can lock down their sentinels, but you at least get a guaranteed plus 20. I think that's pretty good, because the main thing with lock, I think, in some decks, like, it screws over their power gain. Actually, no, no, Drill Knights don't fucking need this. Call the weird grade 2, I think it was, like, or whatever, whoever, get, like, you call on top of them, they get plus 10. Do that. You're already in a plusing situation. It doesn't actually require the old Ashley and Soul to abuse. My only thing is if it did, I wish it would be like if you have Astro and Soul gets a crit, but whatever. It's still an amazing grade 3, um, can work literally on its own, has no ties to any grade 3s in Soul, can be used on the opponents at grade 2 for all of its skill, which is appreciated, and this is just abuse to the opponent because if they don't see it coming, you can just go board restand, basically, because you got 6 attacks, or well, they're grade 2. Astro versus Cool. I'm not a fan of Drill Knights, but I still know this is good. So, some stupid bullshit along the line. Next, we're getting Angel Feathers, which I'm definitely going to not pin this against. And what I mean by that is I'm definitely going to pin it against Stones we're getting another Protect deck. Uh, but, yeah, so Ashley Reverse is just an amazing card. So, I'm going to here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Next week we're getting Spinal Dry Reverse. We also got some new Red Lines revealed for Lyrical Monastery, but we have none of their names, so I'm not going to bother showing it. So yeah, we're going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join Discord, follow the Twitch, and I believe next time will be the end of the collection set reveals, so can't wait to see that. So I'll see you all next one. Don't forget to stand up your vanguards.